I've got some bad news for you. Uh, bariatric surgery is not going to make you skinny, but the good news is it's gonna get you a whole lot closer than anything else will. Hey everyone, it's Mark. Today I wanna to talk to you about what you can expect in terms of weight loss after surgery. And I wanna show you this free online tool I found that should give you a pretty good idea of how much you'll be able to lose. But first I wanna talk about success rates of bariatric surgery. And I wanna compare those with the success rate of non-surgical weight loss methods, specifically diets or lifestyle changes or health journeys or whatever you wanna call them. But to do that, we first need to talk about how success is even measured in the dieting world versus the weight loss surgery world. First, let's define what constitutes success in weight loss surgery, as in how do surgeons and, and researchers define it? Because that may be pretty different from the way that we patients may think of it. Typically, bariatric surgery is only considered a success if you keep off 50% of your excess weight long-term. Not your total body weight, but your, your excess weight. And by excess weight, they mean anything over whatever would be considered a, a normal BMI for you. For example, let's say you need to lose 150 pounds to get down to that normal BMI range. So if you lose 75 and you keep them off long-term, that would be considered a success. And you might be thinking only half the weight, like that's a success, seriously, like why, why bother getting the surgery? Well, here's the thing. The odds are you'll actually lose more than that, but even more importantly, just keeping off half the weight is seriously gonna do wonders for your health. Taking off that weight and keeping off that weight is gonna dramatically decrease your odds of getting diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, fatty liver disease, acid reflux, arthritis, joint pain, right? And if you already have some of those issues, there's actually a pretty good chance that the surgery will resolve them for you. Like 75% of type two diabetics go into remission after surgery. I had prediabetes, it went away after surgery. I had hypertension and it, it's gone. And, and here's the thing, it, it really shouldn't be about the weight. Don't get the surgery because you hate your body, because you, you hate the way it looks. Get the surgery because you love your body and you wanna take care of it. You wanna do what's best for it to help resolve your current health issues and, and to prevent future ones. All right, now let's take a look at what constitutes a success in non-surgical weight loss methods. In other words, diets. Um, on the National Institute of Health, uh, website, they've got an article that says, um, we propose defining successful long-term weight loss maintenance as intentionally losing at least 10% of initial body weight and keeping it off for at least one year. Now let's think about that. In, in non-surgical terms, a diet is considered successful if you keep off 10% of your weight for one year. By that standard, 93% of bariatric surgeries would, would be considered a success. But like I said, with bariatric surgery, they use a different standard. It's not really considered a success unless you can keep off 50% of your excess weight for th at least three to five years. So for example, at my heaviest, I was 440 pounds. So that means if I only lost 44 pounds on a diet and I kept it off for one year, that would be considered a success. So I, I'd be sit, sitting there at 396 pounds and then saying, oh, look at that successful dieter over there. Now, I don't know about you, but being 396 pounds, basically 400 pounds coming down from 440, that doesn't really feel like much of a success. So there is, there's just a huge gap between what constitutes a success in the dieting world versus the surgical weight loss world. Here's in what I think is an eye-opening quote from another peer-reviewed journal article, again from the... Uh, NIH website. It says, both patients and healthcare providers have wildly unrealistic expectations for weight loss outcomes. In one study, patients entering a diet and exercise program expected to lose 20 to 40% of their starting body weight, amounts that can only realistically be achieved by bariatric surgery. They're saying flat out that it's wildly unrealistic to think that you can even lose 20% of your body weight through diet and exercise alone. It doesn't even matter which diet we're talking about, but you can realistically expect to lose that much with weight loss surgery. And I'll include a link to these articles in the description for you so you can read them for yourself. Now let's talk about success rates for non-surgical diets, just your regular diets. There is a common misconception that diets have a 95% failure rate, and that's, that's simply not true. Uh, that number is from a study that was done way back in the 1950s. I'm afraid the real number is much, much worse. Uh, the actual long-term failure rate of every known diet out there is 99.93% for morbidly obese men, and for morbidly obese women, it's a 99.2% failure rate. So please, please, please don't beat yourself up 
if you have tried and failed and tried and failed to lose weight on a diet. The odds of success are effectively zero. Yes, there are some outliers who manage to do it. They're part of the 0.0 whatever percent. They are the very rare exception and, and not the rule. Now, to be clear, I'm not trying to discourage you from losing weight. I'm, I'm trying to encourage you to seriously consider the only thing that will actually help you lose weight and keep it off long-term, and that is bariatric surgery. There are some factors that will affect how much you lose after surgery. Uh, your starting weight, the, the heavier you are, the, the more you're bound to lose and the quicker you're, you're gonna lose. Uh, whether you're male or female, men tend to lose faster than, than women. Your age, young people tend to lose faster than older folks. Um, the specific surgery you had, Gastric bypass tends to give better results than gastric sleeve. Uh, the surgeon who performed the procedure, some of them just have the magic touch. Uh, your activity level, the uh, medications you take, your stress levels, your genetics, all of these things play a role in how much you'll, you'll lose. That said, we can still talk about averages. Uh, so with that, I wanna show you a tool that will give you a pretty good sense for about how much you can expect to lose after bariatric surgery. It's hosted by a site called Obesity Coverage. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description for you, or you can just Google Obesity Coverage Calculator, and it should pop right up at the top. It's, it's totally free, you don't have to register, it's just a quick little calculator thing. I have no affiliation with it at all. I just found it and I thought I'd share it with you. You just plug in your height, your sex, and your current weight, and it'll estimate um, how much you'll probably lose in a year and a half after surgery. Uh, and remember that 18 month mark is typically when you stop losing weight and your weight stabilizes. It'll also break down the estimates based on whether you got the gastric band, even though they don't really do those much anymore, um, or the gastric sleeve or the gastric bypass. And for each of those, it'll give you the odds that you'll reach a certain weight. So let's run my wife's numbers with her permission, of course. Um, so you can see how it works. Um, so I go to the calculator, I plug in her original weight, which was 300 pounds, her height, five feet, nine inches, she is female. Then I scroll down to gastric bypass because that's a surgery she had. And it tells me the odds that she'll reach a certain weight 18 months after surgery. Okay, looks like there's an 80% chance she will get down to 211 pounds, a 50% chance she'll get down to 192 and a 20% chance she'll get down to 173. And guess what? She had her surgery in 2019. 18 months after her surgery, she weighed 173 pounds. This thing was, was bang on the money. So give this calculator a shot. Um, get a feel for what you can realistically expect in terms of sustainable long-term weight loss with bariatric surgery. And if you want to check out some of my other videos, I'll link them here and here, and I'll catch you later.